good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video today we're back with a brand new episode of my damn thoughts and this episode we're covering wwe elite series 95 where we will break down all of the different details aspects and everything you need to know about wwe elite series 95 and of course we are going to rank this set at the end of the video so stay tuned for the ranking of elite series 95 overall my damn thoughts is basically just giving you my overall thoughts of the set we have a few different categories and awards to give out for this set of course and we are going to rank the set like we said so how we usually start these things off is usually with my first thoughts on the set and my first thoughts with this set was very it was like mid you know it, it wasn't like just over the top excited for it we've seen a lot of these characters before a lot of repaints a lot of reissues here in this set but i was excited for a couple things about it and overall with the set i gave it a 7.5 out of 10 you know kind of a 3 you know, 75 it's not bad it's not great could have been better in some areas but overall Overall, I think that the set is pretty good. It's a pretty good set, not, you know, earth-shattering set, not just world-ending set, but, you know, it's middle of the road. Diving in next, we do have the shelf warmer in the set. Now, I have mixed opinions on this because I think that it could go one of two ways. Now, the two shelf warmers that I think it could be, first of all, is Shotzi. Now, you're probably thinking, MDT, you are mentally ill, son. How in the hell are you going to say it's Shotzi Blackheart? Well, it's just simple fact that female figures don't sell as well as male figures. It's just the way that it is, but I also could say... Biggie. I could see Biggie also show forming, and the only reason is because we haven't seen a new day in a while, and it's just pretty much a repaint. You know, it's nothing too crazy. We've seen so many different Biggies in the past, and I know how Bobby Lashley, Eddie Guerrero, John Cena, and Jimmy Uso sell. Nothing against Biggie. I think that I think that he could sell, which is why I think Shotzi will probably be the biggest shelf warmer. But she also stands out on a shelf, so I don't know. I don't know. You know, but I think it's it is one of these two. You know, you can make your pick, whoever you want, but I would say that it's one of these two too and I, I could I could you know I'd ride with that you know I'm not, I got no issues with those they're both really outstanding figures though most of the time shelf warmers don't even represent figures you know sometimes that is the case like bum figures shelf warm but sometimes it's just the way of the world like that elite like a lot of elite Rey Mysterios are some of the best figures you could have in your hands but they shelf warm a lot of the time now getting into the hottest figure in the set don't even get me started it's going to the goat right here you think the goat's not moving in modern gear are you out of your mind John Cena's gonna be the hottest figure in the set and it, it could be like this is like his 30th elite you think he's not moving merch brad it's john cena respect he earned it he flies off shelves all right it's not a throwback cena you're gonna be able to uh, like this figure right here is going to probably be the most valuable as well john cena figures shoot up in value the uso will also be very hot eddie guerrero of course his legends figure was very sought after and then bobby lashley moves merch too so i could see all those but john cena is the number one i think next up in the set we do have the chase figure it's gonna be Eddie Guerrero. Now, he does have this green version, and then he has the black tights version, which is actually a really good figure. I, I, I am excited to hunt that one down. I want to, you know, I want to grab every Eddie Guerrero. I don't have every single chase. I should. I should have been, you know, collecting all those chases. I don't think it'd be too, too hard to go back and grab them all, but I do have a few here and there throughout, but I think this is one that I want to get. So, Eddie Guerrero is the chase figure in the set. Moving up next, we do have the best head sculpt, and this one was difficult for me because uh, the, the I'll break it down for you. So, Bobby Lashley, we've pretty much seen this head sculpt before. I don't like to usually give it to repeat head sculpts. I like to give it to the newer head sculpts. So, Big E, Bobby Lashley are uh, are both reuse. You know, we've seen those before. They're really good. They're just reuse. Eddie Guerrero is the worst head sculpt in the set. I'll get that out there right now. I don't even know if that's a segment on the video. I just want it to be known that that head sculpt's the worst in the set. Shotzi's is good, but I don't think that it really... I don't, I don't know if the likeness is really too much like her. I feel like if you really look at a picture of Shotzi, I don't think this like looks just like her. I think the head sculpt's the worst part of the figure. As far as likeness to Shotzi, I think from the neck down is a lot more accurate to Shotzi than the face sculpt is. I do like the tongue out head sculpt, but I don't think it's the best one in the set. I think you're looking at a two person race here between Jimmy Uso, which a lot of people think is Jey Uso, and then John Cena with the modern haircut, which I think is a really damn good head sculpt. So, I hate to do it, Brad, but I think John Cena wins here again. I think he wins again. You know, I think the hair's too long here. If this is really meant to be Jimmy Uso. The hair's not right. And then the face is good. I just think it looks a lot like, you know, a lot like Jey Uso. So I'm going with John Cena's modern head. I think it's a really good head sculpt. I think you could put it on multiple looks. You know, you could throw that on that Fast and Furious figure that was god awful. Next up, guys, we're getting into the best articulation. And it came down to two or three guys that I thought could have won this. But it's going to come down to people with ball joints and people with good formulas. And that's going to be John Cena, Jimmy Uso, and Bobby Lashley. But I think at the 
end of the day, the GOAT wins again, man. The GOAT wins again. This shorts mold of John Cena right here is very, very articulated. It feels really, really good in hand. I like the ab crunch. I like the addition of the double jointed arms. Anybody who has these Cena figures in this, this, the shorter short mold, not the long short mold, this shorter short mold right here that they've been using for John Cena, this is the best formula for John Cena at this juncture, and I love it. So, John Cena is the best articulation. I also like the Jimmy Uso, and I also like the Bobby Lashley. You could argue for those, but for me, I like the way that John Cena feels the best in hand, in my opinion. Up next is the worst articulation segment. Now, this is down to two people again, and it's the shelf warmers, man. It is Shotzi Blackheart, and it is Big E. This Big E formula, the ab crunch is really difficult. You don't know pain until you've tried pick fetting with a Big E figure, man. Good God in heaven. It is difficult. It is a task. It's a full-time job, bro. Big E figures are really, really hard to pose around. Not saying you can't do it. Not saying it's not possible, but it is like pulling teeth. It is a difficult task. He's really hard to move around. The torso mold is very unique. And then for women's figures, you guys know that the arms get stuck a lot of times and their ab crunch isn't very good. The Shotzi is really good on articulation for a women's figure standard, but compared to her peers here, she is, you know, her and Biggie, uh, her and Biggie have the worst articulation. That's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, man. You hate to see it, but that is unfortunately where we are there. But Eddie Guerrero is pretty decent, but his, he doesn't have ball joints, so that kind of sets him back just a little bit. But speaking of Eddie Guerrero, the best accessory in the set. Now, I have kind of a tie goes to the runner a little bit here. And it's going to either be the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. And it's either going to be the SmackDown Tag Team Championship from the Ruthless Aggression Era, which is just beautiful WWE tag title. Or it's going to be John Cena shirt and hat combo, which, you know, it's supposed to be giving it to just one accessory. So I guess you could give it to the title belt if you want to. But I also like the shirt and hat with Cena. Anytime we get a shirt and hat with Cena, that is going to, you know, get a lot of bonus points because I think it's cool that they come together. You got the arm bands that are removable. It's just really sweet. I love that about John Cena figures and collecting them. I think they look really, really nice up on a shelf. That's where I stand with that. And you, yeah, yeah, I mean, the SmackDown tag title is really elite, though. I may give it to that overall. Now, comparing this set to Elite Series 94 and Elite Series 96, I didn't think Elite 94 was just the greatest set of all time. I don't remember exactly what I gave it, but the Bret Hart was really strong. The Edge was really strong. I thought that, you know, MSK was pretty cool. I didn't like the step. I didn't really care for the Mace figure. I think Elite 96 is, is definitely stronger than this set, but Elite 94, I think this, 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 I think this set may edge Elite 94 out by just a tad, but I think Elite 96 does beat this set barely. You know, you got the Ilya Dragon off the sick Brock Lesnar, the Hulk Hogan, the King Nakamura in all white, the really sick Kofi gear. Yeah, I think this set does fall short of Elite 96, but Elite 94, I think it does surpass it just barely. Speaking of which, when Elite Series 100 drops, I am going to rank every single WWE Elite Wave from worst to best. So, at number 100, it could be set Elite 81, and then at 99, Elite 17, and then 98, Elite 4. You see what I'm saying? And we can crown the best Elite set of all time. It's going to be a very big project. I do want to do that, so that is a, a big-time video that I'm working on. It'll probably be an hour long or something like that. It could be longer. We'll have to see about that, but that is a project that I do want to do, and that should be a, a fun one. So that's something you guys can look forward to within the next year or so. But now it is time to rank this set, and I want to get them all off the screen just in case they're in some specific order or something like that. But it is now time to rank Elite Series 95 from worst to best. Now I have to get this preface out of the way. Just because a figure comes in at number six doesn't mean that it's not a good figure at all. It doesn't have any good qualities about it, and it's just worthless trash. And just because a figure is number one doesn't mean that it's not without any faults whatsoever, and it cannot be nitpicked and, and find something wrong with it. It does not make it perfection. And if it is perfection, I'll, I'll tell you otherwise. But apparently I nitpick and complain about everything. That's what a lot of people tell me. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking out for your wallets, Brad. Let's dive into the ranking and rank this set from worst to best. Coming in at number six, man, you probably already know what it is. But it's going to be the Big E figure, the Big E Elite 95. I actually like this figure a lot. And low-key, might be the best Big E ever made, you know. But uh, my shoulder was kind of bummy. Not taking that really into account. It is a nice Big E repeat head sculpt. I do like the gear. I just don't think it was necessarily a need right now. You know, I think Elite 98 Big E, maybe that'll come out better, but I just don't know about this one. I think that it came up in a set that featured a lot of great figures, and just at the end of the day, I think I'd rather have the other figures in the set over this one. I think I prefer a more New Day Big E, possibly. I don't know what the deal is there, but that is my number six figure. Big E is number six. Coming in at number five, we have Bobby Lashley. You know, it is a repaint. It's literally the Elite 89 Bobby Lashley, but the Elite Bobby Lashley from Elite 89 is a damn good figure. I like that they fixed the head sculpt. I like the gear.
here. It could have been way, way better. But at the end of the day, I'd rather have this Bobby Lashley than that Big E. And I think that is where it's set apart right there. And I put him at the number five spot. Coming in at the number four spot might shock some people, Brad. It might shock some people, but I went with Eddie Guerrero. Love Ruthless Aggression, Eddie Guerrero. Love the formula. Do not love the head sculpt. And that is really what set me back. I think if it had been a really perfect head sculpt, maybe we got a cloth Latino heat shirt, something of that nature. You know, some different bells and whistles here and there. Maybe could have put it over the top, but I think the head sculpt really sets me back. And so he came in at the number four spot. Coming in at number three, we do have Shotzi Blackheart. I really like this figure a lot. I think that uh, the tattoos look really, really good. The head sculpt's cool with the tongue out head sculpt. I like the choker detail. I like all of the different bells and whistles this gets. You get the Ultimate Edition boots here. It just doesn't feel as good in the hand as I wanted it to. I don't know exactly what that is. It just feels a bit stiff in the hand and stuff, but it is a really beautiful figure to look at. I also don't like the gaps in the tattoos right there, but yeah, Shotzi comes in at number three. I think it's a damn good figure. Probably women's figure of the year. It's going to be up there. No doubt about it. Then coming in at number two and number one, it's going to be Jimmy Uso versus John Cena, and you guys know that I waited and waited and I 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 finally got black jogger Usos that I've been waiting on forever. And finally they gave it to us, but it wasn't enough. John Cena's number one. I, I just think that if I had to pick any figure from this set to have, I think it would be the John Cena. Now, I say all that, you know, I waited forever on the Jimmy Uso or just Usos and Black Joggers. Ooh, now that I mention that, I feel like that, if I could only have one figure from the set, but I love this formula of Cena and this updated look of Cena, but the Black Joggers, Brad. Oh, God. But it's not even Jimmy Uso. I think, you know, I think you can, some of that stuff is baseless. You can't just come out here and be like, yeah, but like, at the end of the day, this figure is not perfection. I mean, this one's not either, but at the same time, they didn't they didn't change any molds about it. They borderline released a Jey Uso and call it Jimmy Uso. Ah, very hard. I can't, I can't put the goat down. Alright, that's it. Very hard to do. Leave me your ranking down in the comment section below, but that is going to wrap up today's My Damn Thoughts episode, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I have to get into the random shout-out before we get out of here. So the shout-out's going to go to Riley Kindred, who says, I'd really like to see a Kurt Angle Ultimate Edition. Could come with the different variations of his medals. Maybe a singlet where the top half comes down. Bloody head skull. I also hope Jericho gets a supreme figure. So many versions of Jericho. First of all, a Kurt Angle Ultimate Edition would shatter my universe. That would be absolutely beautiful. And it's great that you mentioned Jericho because Kurt Angle and Chris Jericho were my two first favorite wrestlers ever. So I adored them as a child. I still adore them to this day. They're two of my favorites of all time. Top 10. They would be in my top 10 ever. And so borderline top five. Yeah, you know, I'd have to play around with that. It's hard to compare like, you know, guys that you've watched your whole life to, you know, guys that you love love now a lot so you know that's something that it would have to be addressed but I think that a Kurt Angle Ultimate Edition would be beautiful and he just had that documentary release I don't know if he's under a Legends deal I would lose my mind to see a Kurt Angle Legends Ultimate Edition Target exclusive or even a mainline release for Kurt Angle that would be beautiful too but a Jer Jericho Supreme is something that will absolutely happen I think that he could even be in Series 4 you know I, I think that could absolutely be a thing maybe a Mox and a Jericho for Series 4 would be cool for Supreme Editions you guys know we have Kenny and Malachi Black coming in Series 2, and then Series 3 is the Lucha Bros, which a lot of people didn't see coming, so that'll be something as well, but yeah, I'm all aboard that, but a huge shout out to Riley Kindred for the random shout out, man. I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Leave me your thoughts down below on this set, and leave me your ranking as, uh, you know, we like to do, but I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and you, you guys know the deal. You cross the line.